My name is Sonia Ward, and I will be saying Patrick Henry. No man thinks more highly than I do of the patriotism as well as abilities of the very worthy gentlemen who have just addressed the house. But different men often see the same subjects in different lights. And therefore, I hope that it will not be thought disrespectful of those gentlemen. If, entertaining as I do, opinions of a character very opposite to theirs, I shall speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for ceremony. The question before the house is one of an awful moment to this country. For my part, I consider it nothing less than the question of freedom or slavery. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time through fear of giving offense? I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country and an act of disloyalty towards the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. For my part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no way of judging of the future, but by the past. And judging by the past, I wish to know what there has been in the conduct of the British ministry for the last ten years years to justify those hopes which gentlemen have been pleased to solace themselves. Is it that insidious smile which our petitions have been lately received? Trust it not, sir, it will prove a snare to your feet. Suffer not yourselves to be betrayed with a kiss. Ask yourself how this gracious reception of our petition comports with these warlike preparations which cover our waters and darken our lands. Are fleets and armies necessary to work of love and reconciliation? Have we shown ourselves so unwilling to be reconciled that force must be called in to win back our love? I ask, gentlemen, sir, what means of this martial array, if its purpose be not to force us to submission? They are meant for us. They are meant for no other. They are sent over to bind and rivet upon us those chains which the British ministry has been so long forging. And what have we to oppose to them? Shall we try argument? Sir, we have been trying that for the last 10 years. Have we anything new to offer on this subject? Nothing. Sir, we have done everything that could be done to avert the storm which is now coming on. We have petitioned. We have remonstrated, we have supplicated, we have prostrated ourselves before the throne and have employed its interposition to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. Our petitions have been slighted. Our remonstrances have produced additional violence and insult. Our supplications have been disregarded. And we have been spurned with contempt from the foot of the throne. In vain, after these things, do we indulge the fond hope of peace and reconciliation. There is no longer any room for hope. If we wish to be free, if we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle in which we have been so long engaged, we must fight. I repeat the term. We must fight. Fight and appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that is left us. They tell us, sir, that we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when shall we be stronger? Will it be in the next week or the next year? Will it be when we are totally disarmed and a British guard shall be stationed in every house? Shall we gather strength by irresolution and inaction? Shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs and hugging that elusive phantom of hope until our enemies shall have bound us hand and foot? Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of the means which the God of nature hath placed in our power. Three millions of people armed in the holy cause of liberty. And in such a country as that which we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. 
The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, the brave. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged, their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat it, sir, let it come. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweep from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death.